Pastor Mike Palumbo here. For our Westminster Catechism study today, we're going to look at question 44. We have now begun our study of the Ten Commandments, and we started with a preface yesterday. Today we're going to look at what this preface teaches us about obedience to God's Word. So look at question number 44. Here's what it says. What does the preface to the Ten Commandments teach us? The preface to the Ten Commandments teaches us that because God is the Lord and our God and Redeemer, therefore we are bound to keep all His commandments. You see, before we get into the Ten Commandments, we hear about God's deliverance. We hear that He is a gracious and faithful God who saves. That is, deliverance precedes devotion. Now, this is very important for us to understand Old Testament ethics and biblical ethics. We don't just do what we're called to do. First, we delight in God's deliverance, and then we devote to God's purposes. Now, Ellie, our daughter, who is seven months now, uh, is a joy to love, to parent, to care for. A lot of our caring and parenting of her now is changing diapers, uh, enjoying playing with her, seeing her roll and smile and giggle, sometimes fuss. Uh, but she doesn't say many articulate words right now, though she has said the word mom. But we know that at some point, Ellie is going to say a number of words and ask a number of questions. And as we raise Ellie in the faith, it is extremely important that we teach her the law of God. But not just tell her to do this, but explain to her why we do what we do as a family. Now in Deuteronomy 6, Moses calls families to teach the law of God to their children in a very immersive way. It calls us to teach the law of God in the homes, at the dinner table, as we go about daily routines in life. That the word of God is to be all over our household, all over our dialogue, and displayed everywhere. And this is that we are to raise our family with a deep awareness of the God that we love and the God that we serve. Now there's going to be a time, according to Deuteronomy 6.20, when our children are going to want to know, why do we do what we do as a family? What does all of this mean? So what are we to say? Now some of you are very nervous about your children asking any questions. You're nervous because you don't know if you have the answers to their questions. You're nervous because questions seem to indicate doubt, and you're not sure how to respond to the doubts of your children. But let me say that there are many questions that are all about discovery. Your child wants to know, why do we do what we do? Because they see others doing different things. And so it's very important that we engage these questions with our children. In Deuteronomy 6.20, he gives us some clarity as to what to say. He says, when your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and grievous against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. I think it's very interesting that Moses, when asked a question from a child, what do these rules mean? What does the law of God really mean? He doesn't then explain the particulars about how you apply the law to all of life. He doesn't explain what it means to not murder or to worship the Lord your God alone or, or what it means to not bear false witness and lie. No, the very first thing he does is tell the story of deliverance. What does he say? He says, remember, what is the meaning of this? That we were in desperate situation as slaves in Egypt. And in our desperation, we called out to the God who delivers with a mighty hand. And the Lord delivered us. He brought us out that he might bring us in. And this is the gospel. The Lord brings us out of our sin to bring us in. He saves us by sacrifice that we might be brought into relationship, covenant relationship. And that is why this text says in the Westminster Shorter Catechism that why do we do this uh, preface? What does it teach us? It teaches us that the Lord is the Lord and our God. He is the faithful covenant God 
who is our God, devoted to us as his people. He is our Redeemer who delivers us that we might be in a delight, satisfying relationship with him and that we might devote to his purposes. And that's exactly what Deuteronomy 6 says. Not only is he the God who delivers us, but he calls us to devote to his purposes, to fear the Lord our God. Why? For our good always. You see, we need to teach our children the goodness of God's law and how it is for our good that we do not murder, that we do not lie, that we do not commit adultery, that we worship the Lord our God. And that's why the Westminster Shorter Catechism actually gives a lot of really good reasons to do what we are called to do. And every one of the commandments we're going to see in order where he says the positive thing that God's called us to in this commandment and then what it restricts or what it prohibits. But it's very important that we clarify the positive why to what we do and what it looks like practically. It is that we would fear him for our good always. To what purpose? That he might preserve us alive. That we would do righteousness and be careful to pursue his commandment. Why? Because he is the Lord our God. He has bound us in faithful deliverance that we might respond in faithful devotion. So let us commit to this word of God not to earn deliverance, but as a delivered people of God, let us devote to his law. This is what the preface teaches us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your faithfulness and goodness and love. We thank you that you have delivered us, that we might devote to your law in relationship with you. Help us to trust in Jesus, the one who ultimately delivers us from not only the sin of others, but our personal sin, that we might be in a relationship with you. Thank you for his love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who has delivered you from your sin, that you might devote to him in relationship. Look to him in his grace. God bless. Have a great day.